When we think about developing faith in others, especially our children, there's no substitute for spending time. There's no substitute for going to them, going where they are, and that can also that can be physical distance, but it can also be going to where they are in their understanding and taking the time to go to them and to raise them up in their faith. Aren't you glad that he never let go? I'm glad of that. Here we go. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. Storms of this life I won't turn 
encourage you just for a few moments this morning from uh, the New Testament in 2 Thessalonians about those things. I uh, have been walking through the New Testament and on Sunday mornings we've been looking together at each book of the Bible and we find ourselves in 2 Thessalonians and I think 2 Thessalonians is a rather providential book for us on this family Sunday because I love the way that it begins. 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter and the third verse, I believe, speaks directly to where we are this morning. My heart is, is captured by these children today. And when I think about these children, I think about words like Paul has written to the church in 2 Thessalonians 1.3. Take a look with me. It says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly. And the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. So Paul's writing a letter to the church at Thessalonica, to the believers who are there. And we said last Sunday, in looking at Paul's first letter in the Bible to Thessalonians, that this was a relatively young church. Children in the faith is a way that I would describe this church. And so as Paul speaks to these children in the faith... He rejoices in this second letter. In the opening part of the letter, he says two things. He says, your faith is growing and your love is growing. And Paul says, I give thanks to God because your faith is growing and your love is growing. Your faith is growing exceedingly. Your love is abounding. It's overflowing. It's growing toward one another. We are born with the expectation that we are going to continue to grow. In God, we are born of His Spirit with the expectation that we're going to continue to grow in our faith and in our love. And Paul says to the Thessalonians, I thank God that you're doing that. I thank God that your faith is growing and your love is growing. Now, how does that happen? How does that happen? As I said before, we have a part to play in that. And as an illustration of that, uh, we have some folks that are going to give us a little object lesson. I think Brent, Lee, and Asa are going to be so kind as to come forward at this time. Am I right, Brent? Thank you, man. Thank you. Asa, speaking of growing, and I'm not talking about Brent, <laughs> but uh, 
I think you're, I think you're going down, Brent. I'm just saying. I think you're in trouble. No mercy, Asa. No mercy. <laughs> Billy, tell us what's going on here. It's yellow, and she's saying yellow. Am I sorry? See, it lights up over oh. here when it's on. It does. Mm, the power, yeah. thank you. So the first contest was, can Pastor Billy turn the mic on? I won. And she... This morning we are talking about um, how the church has to pitch in this morning on, on the growth of our children, on the growth of our, um, even children in the faith, whether that children in the faith is 60 years old. The church is supposed to pitch in. And this morning, um, we're going to play a little minute to win it game with uh, tissues. So Brent and Asa have one minute to pull all the tissues out of both boxes using only one hand. The kids, I want you obviously to cheer for our man Asa. Thank you. Youth, why don't you help them out? Can you hear, cheer for Asa? And then all of you adults, we'll call you, um, I want you to whisper for Brent. Easy. All right, here we go. You guys got a minute to win it. Wait for it. I told Paul I could count to 60, but he said there's a video. So... All right, I'll count to 60. Ready? Count with me. Here we go. You have a minute to win it. One. Go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, Asa. <laughs> nice. Good job. Let's give him a hand. You know, in kids' church, the kids always, when we do all the Jack lessons, they say, Pastor Billy, what's the point? Here's the point. Jack normally does something. I pull out a tissue. What comes next? Another tissue, right? And another tissue, right? Which one? Or is, let's see how the next tissue pops right up. Does the tissue that comes out pull up the next tissue? Or does the tissue under the box support the next tissue? Both, right? <laughs> we're supposed to not only support our brothers and sisters in Christ, but when they're down, we're supposed to pull them up. Who here wants to be a tissue father? Who here wants to be a tissue mother? When our kids are down, we want to support them and, and pull them up, right? Who here wants to be a tissue grandparent, right? Who here wants to be a tissue brother or sister in Christ? We all do. Here's the point. We're supposed to support our kids. We're supposed to love them. We're supposed to, when they're down, we're supposed to pull them up. The tissues do both. They pull them up and they support them. And that's what we're supposed to do this morning. That's what Paul is talking about when he writes 2 Thessalonians. He's talking about the church doing their job of supporting. This morning, don't miss out. Be a tissue. Right. <laughs> Come on, give it up. No, you're all right. I, can... I think it will be helpful if I start crying here in a minute. I'm in good shape. I'm covered. I am covered. Pretty good. I, where were these during the baby dedication? That's what I want to know. I could. That, that right. That's right. Should have done this first. Now, if if Paul was serious about contributing to the development of the new believers, the children in the faith, and I know that he was, then we would expect to find evidence of that. And so this morning, I'd like to walk through some things that. We find, as Paul wrote to this particular church, this particular group of people, that show us some things, some lessons, some lessons for our parents. If, if we were going to plant, and we'll be doing that soon, some of you may have already uh, put out some bulbs that you expect to produce some beautiful flowers in the springtime. If you're going to do that, 
you know that there's certain things that contribute to the growth of those flowers. You're going to expect that you're going to place those in the right kind of soil. You may even add a little miracle grow. You know what I'm talking about. You're going to expect that they need water. You're going to expect that they need sunlight. You're going to expect that certain things will contribute uh, to growth and to development. The same thing is true when we look into the Word of God. God has expectations for us as members of His family. Expectation of parents, of those of us who support our children in their faith, in the, in the development of their faith and their love for God and for others. So I want to look at, at Paul's writing. I'm going to have some of our children help me with this. And they're going to come up in just a moment. I want to begin with a verse in Acts chapter 17 because... This is where we first discover that Paul was going to be a missionary to Thessalonica and, and begin this church. And we learn a lesson from that. In Acts chapter 17, the very first verse, it says, Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews. The first lesson that I think we can learn about Paul is that he was willing to spend the time that it took to go to them. I'd love to hear you repeat that after me and just say, spending time. Spending time. Let's say that one more time. Spending time. Spending time. When we think about developing faith in others, especially our children, there's no substitute for spending time. There's no substitute for going to them. Going where they are, and that can, also, that can be physical distance, but it can also be going to where they are in their understanding and taking the time to go to them and to raise them up in their faith. If you remember a while ago on Sunday morning, on one of our family's uh, Sunday mornings, we talked about the importance of Deuteronomy chapter 6. It talks about ways to spend time with our children. We identified Four ways, in fact. We talked about meal time and drive time and bedtime and morning time. You can find that in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Those are great ways for us to remind ourselves daily spending time. Spending time first thing in the morning. Spending time when you're in the car. Spending time when you're eating. Spending time at bedtime. All of those are times as parents and as family members that we can invest in our children's faith. One lesson Paul teaches us is, is to spend time together. The second one we can find in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5. I think, uh, I think Kelby is going to come and read at this time. Can you share 1 Thessalonians 1 5 with us? You just use this microphone right here. That one should be ready for you. Because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction, you, knew how, you know how we live among you for your sake. Amen. Let's say thank you to Kelby for sharing that. Thank you. All right. The second thing we learned, not only did Paul spend time with them, but also you see very clearly that he shared the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit. He was willing to share the gospel. We need to share the gospel specifically with our children. We need to share with them who Jesus is and what he has done, what he has provided, our testimony when we come to communion together as a church family is a perfect opportunity to let that be a catalyst for discussion, a catalyst for time together with our children to say, let me talk to you again about what Pastor Paul said about communion time. It is a time to remember the gospel, the good news that our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, was buried and raised from the dead, that he's provided for us, that he is our Savior, that he is our Lord. And so we spend time, but we also explicitly share the gospel. It also, within what Paul had to say in 1 Thessalonians, if you listen carefully when Kelby was reading, he said, I did this in the power of the Spirit. Let me encourage you, ask for God's help. Ask for God's help. God wants to help us share the gospel. God has promised to help us share the gospel. God has given us power to share the gospel through the Holy Spirit. We need help to do that, and Paul gives testimony to that. The third thing I'd like for us to recognize comes from 
1 Thessalonians, the first chapter, in verse 2. And I think Libby is going to come and share this with us. It says, we always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. We need to pray for our children. Paul prayed. Listen to Paul's words. He said that, that we give thanks to God always. Last Sunday we talked about how 1 Thessalonians teaches us a lesson about how we should rejoice always, how we should pray without ceasing, how we should give thanks and everything. Paul is living that out in terms of praying for the children in the faith that he had seen come to the Lord. He had started this church and they were growing in their faith, they were growing in their love, but Paul says, know this, that I am always praying for you. Our children deserve to know that we're always praying for them. Amen? Our children deserve to know that we are always praying for them. And not just that we are, but we need to tell them that we are. Paul wrote this to the children in the faith. And do you know I can imagine, and I, and I know in, t in taking a look at the, Old Test the New Testament and, and seeing how these letters worked, Paul would say, you know, I'm sending this letter. I'm greeting all of the believers who are there. And at times he would call them by name. I envision that they would gather around to hear these letters read. We know from church history that these letters were circulated and they were shared. And they were read out loud in all kinds of places, in all kinds of situations. They were read as encouragement. But can you imagine with me when persecution and troubles came and struggles and challenges came upon these believers that it would be encouraging for them to hear Paul say, I'm praying for you. Our children face all kinds of challenges. And if you are older than your children, which I can almost guarantee you that you are, then they're facing challenges that you didn't face. And, and they're facing significant challenges that you didn't face. And they're facing them in ways you didn't face them. And they need to know we're praying for them every day. They need to know that. Let's learn a couple more things. I think Caitlin's going to come and read from the second chapter, the second verse. We have... We have previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know, but with help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel of the face of strong opposition. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Come on. When you listen to what Paul says, Paul says that he was willing to go the extra mile. He speaks of his suffering. He speaks of what he's endured. He speaks of his willingness to boldly share the gospel in spite of the fact that he had endured lots of tribulation and persecution. He had suffered. What a message to us today that we need to go the extra mile with our kids. You say it's, it's hard sometimes to share. Yes, it is. It's challenging sometimes to know what to say, to know when to say it. Yes, it is. But Paul's words, they pierce my heart and remind me that we need to be willing to go the extra mile. We need to be willing to go the extra mile. We have the help of the Holy Spirit, as, as we saw earlier. But we also need to have a determination. 
a strong will when it comes to going the extra mile for our kids, with doing what it takes to pray for them, to share with them, to listen to them, to talk to them, to bring them to church, to participate in activities that will nourish their faith and help their faith and their love to grow. We need to go the extra mile. We need to be willing to invest ourselves in our children to help them grow spiritually and develop. The final one, I think Alexis is going to come at this time and share a great verse from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. So we cared for you because we loved you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Wow. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what Paul said? He says, we weren't, we weren't just there to share the gospel, but we were there to give our lives for you. We didn't just come to preach the gospel. We came, we were willing to give our lives. And, and I think that as a church, you know, in, in this will be uh, my final point today, is that let's give our lives for our children in, in terms of our example. It's all of life. It's not just what we speak. It's how we live. It's not just the words we say, but it's the testimony. It's the confession of our lives. It's how we live every day. When I think about how I learned to pray, yes, I learned from reading prayers, but I learned to pray by listening to my mom and dad pray. I learned to pray by observing how and when they pray. I learned to pray because I saw them call upon the Lord in, in the easy times and the tough times. And I saw a daily discipline of prayer in them. Paul says, I was willing to give my life, all of my life. Great lessons from Paul. I think these lessons speak to us as a church family. I think they teach us some things. As Paul wrote to his children in the faith, he gives us a great example of how we live as a church family. Let me remind you that these precious little ones that were dedicated to the Lord today, yes, they belong to these parents and these family members that stood before him, grandparents, extended members of their family. Yes, they belong to them, and certainly I'm not taking away from the primary responsibility, but we as a church also have a responsibility. The words of Jesus were powerful when he said, Do not hinder them. Don't rebuke them. Let the little children come to me. And as a church, we need to do everything we can to nurture their faith so that their faith grows, so that their love grows, and give our lives to that purpose, to live an example before them. What a beautiful day today to be together. Amen? Amen. What a great day for our church family that we can celebrate together. I pray that you will go from here encouraged.